Hello, everyone. I am Professor Sona Vikas at the School of Management and Liberal Studies, the North Cap University, in conversation with founder and CEO of DigiDarts, Mr. Siddharth Vanwani. Siddharth is a bachelor's in business administration from Guru Gobind Singh Indra Prasth University, Delhi. And I've had the privilege of teaching him in his graduation. And that is how I think I have seen him evolve and grow to, to what he is today. Thereafter, he moved on to do his master's degree in international marketing management from the University of Leeds. Siddharth has come a long way. He founded uh, DigiDarts in 2014 when he was hardly 22 years old. And that was not even the time when entrepreneurs were actually, you know, starting out. So taking that decision and that leap, he hasn't looked back since then. He is an imaginative marketer who is uh, brewing digital scalability recipe in the AI bent world. He has built and raised DigiDarts right from the scratch. And today it is one of the most powerful, pioneer, full funnel performance marketing agency, having worked since more than nine years in, in uh, you know, building this brand called DigiDarts. I think, Siddharth, it is truly commendable. You have worked with, I think, more than 150 brands and uh, creating an impact on brands like Misho, uh, Birkenstock India, Amazon Prime Video, Spotify, uh, India, uh, the G4S India, Amway, I think the, the list is endless. So it is absolutely brilliant. And I am so delighted. I am so proud that at some point of time, I have been part of your journey in your education. And today you stand here and, and it is truly delightful. So thank you so much for taking out time today and being here with us. I welcome uh, you. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. I think uh, you've been very kind with your words. Uh, I strongly believe that Every person in, in your journey makes a lot of difference and uh, you in the, you as an individual and while, of course, while, while I was a student at IP University, you did make a lot of difference. So thanks. Thank you for that. And of course, all the great words you've had uh, to talk about us, talk about me and talk about DigiDuts. I think um, the people have been kind. God have been kind. Our brands have been doing well. So I think uh, we've been perseverant, uh, we've been patient, and we've been working very hard. So for all these nine years, I would always have gratitude for everyone who has contributed to our journey. That is so yeah. kind and so humble of you to say that. And I'm so glad that, you know, those heirs are not there. You are a self-built person and you are truly an inspiration for the youngsters today. So if I look at it, how do you think your education shaped your career path? Uh, see, I think education over the last, specifically over the last decade, uh, has really evolved. Uh, I think while we were like in, we, I, was, I, I did my graduation in 2011. At that point of time, it was very academic. But I think I was very lucky to have the right friends at that point of time who were equally passionate to thrive in their career. So I think education, going back to college or being in a university is about being with the right set of people. And when you're with the right set of people, you tend to learn from them. You tend to grow out of them. You tend to absorb so much of knowledge and wisdom. I think this entire period of education of my like I, I think I studied for four and a half years. I think I'll always give it to the ecosystem I had. And of course, I think uh, Indian education today has evolved so much. Uh, people are learning learning from case studies. People absorbing so much of information. There's so much of information out there on internet, which is part of academics today. So I think uh, education combined with the right colleagues, combined with the right uh, exposure, combined with the right friends, with a lot of wisdom and information to be talked about, I think it does make a lot of difference. So, yeah, I think I was fortunate enough to come across the right faculty, right, right friends, 
um, right information, right knowledge at the right time. And I think that's it's a major, major foundation of what we are today. So yeah, a kudos to every person who contributed and a big, big thank you to them. I think you also set an example that, you know, students who think college life is there only for enjoyment. It It is there, but there is so much to do, so much to learn at that time and create your foundation. And you actually didn't waste those, you know, uh, four and a half years of your education. So that is something which is commendable and the youngsters today should learn from. So, so wonderful. Also, I was just wondering that, you know, uh, you got into uh, social media and digital marketing at a time when people were not even talking too much about it. It yeah. it was still in its nascent stages. So you must have uh, maybe faced some challenges and how did you go about handling them? Uh, I think education is key again. Um, it's important to educate your customer. It's important to tell your customer where they're spending their money on. Um, Indian audience have always been a curious audience. They want to know what's happening latest in the world. Uh, they want to be a part of it. India, of course, has the most, like for next the next 100 years belong to India. It's not about a decade. I was sitting with a couple of founders yesterday, um, uh, Jatan and Tushar, uh, who runs Pafora, a very famous uh, a dental care brand. It has been disruptive in that space. And we're talking about that, okay, is it the next decade or is it the next 100 years? So I think it's the next 100 years belong to India because Indians are so adaptive, so innovative and so curious about it that it'll continue to evolve. So yes, we started early, but we didn't have that barrier where people don't want to try something new or um, they were like, okay, what is the social media? That's not where our audience lies. They they knew that the world is moving to mobile phones. They know that they're spending their most of the time there. So I think uh, when we entered the stage, we were already, the world was already talking about digital, like the way people are already talking about AI today. So if you go to a company or if you go to a brand or an individual and tell them, okay, why don't you try AI? They'll not say no. So back in 2014, when, to, when we went to brands, when we spoke to people and tell them, told them, okay, we can drive business via digital channels, they never said no. So I think that way is the curiosity of Indians and the adaptiveness in this very dynamic ecosystem is very high. And that's what is making us one of the most fastest growing economies in the world. So as an organization, we never had that challenge. I think then uh, it, it is uh, very fortunate that, you know, uh, the world was actually receptive to this yeah. concept and you got that opportunity. And because you had that first mover advantage, it, it really yeah. worked in your favor. And and I always believe that, you know, the value system of our country with respect to the way we uh, think about work, about our hardworking nature, our patience and persistence. It it actually contributes to the fact that wherever we go, we will be able yeah. to make a mark and somehow, you know, uh, scale scale through and uh, just just achieve whatever we want to. So I, I think those qualities it. in you would yeah. have uh, contributed and give you given you that advantage which maybe others may not have had. I think as an organization, we've been very empathetic. Uh, we do not uh, do anything where we cannot educate our customer. So uh, we've, be, we've gone out there, understand complex business problems, be empathetic about it, see if we can actually solve it. If we cannot solve it, we, do not, we don't say that we'll come and contribute to what you guys are already doing. So I think uh, it's about understanding customer's proposition. See if there's a problem which can be simplified and can be solved educate your customer about it and things will happen. It's not about picking up random things, doing random things and then waiting for random results to happen. It's about a pure play structure problem solving. And then of course, giving a solution which will help them yield results. And I think that approach has always worked for us. Great. I was also, uh, you know, wondering that today because there is so much scope of work as a career full time, a lot of education institutions, you know, has started specific uh, programs like, for example, BBA or MBA in digital marketing. So uh, if, if you look at yourself where your formal education was a general 
uh, under graduation and you did international marketing. This kind of qualification, specialization in digital marketing, do you think uh, it is uh, having scope and it is an advantage? Will the students have an edge over others? I think absolutely. Uh, like uh, the world is moving to a specific skill set and specialization there. Uh, I've come across people who are now doing masters uh, in courses like wine, right? Okay. So, so there's there's a French university which says that we you come to the country, and we'll help you do masters and specialization in studying wine. So I think every passion today or every hobby today which a human has, there is a course to specialize in it and build a career out 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 of it. So of course, performance, digital, uh, social, what any form of marketing today. If someone has keen interest and they want to build a career on that, these specialized courses which give specific education on specific subjects, it will always be an add-on and will be beneficial for them to absorb those foundational instincts or knowledge which they can get in an education system. So I would I would always say that, okay, if you have keen interest towards anything, your education needs to complement that considering this decade and now our Indian education system is already already facilitating it. So why not to take most most use of it? Historically, we've had courses where people were doing banking and finance BBA, right? Yeah. Why did they, did, did they do it? They did it because they want to get into banks and they want to get into finance and they still are doing the same. So if you have courses which are saying that you can have a specialization in performance slash digital marketing. Why not? Go ahead and do it. Back it up with a strong internship. And I'm sure it will be a bullseye application of your three years of education. And apart from uh, this basic qualification, what other skills do you think uh, the candidates should have in order to be successful in, in this uh, digital and social media marketing? Uh, I think uh, one thing which AI has really changed is that people have stopped thinking. So I think one thing I've been really talking about these days is critical thinking. Uh, I would really want candidates in the age of AI and digital to not stop thinking, uh, be very innovative about it. And that can only happen when you're raw and when you're talking. So if you're critically thinking, you're raw and you can learn the art of communication and listening together. I think that's what will shape the world in a better future decades down the line. So I, I and, and you look at Gen Z today, I think that's uh, the listening ability is something they struggle with. So yes, I think uh, they need to listen. They need to communicate. And of course, they need to think. I know these are basic skills, but I think they're very important wherever you go in your career. So yes, my recommendation will, of course, be using all your five senses, which you have really smart and not depend on any virtual AIs to think or talk or communicate. Actually, the dependency on AI now has, uh, uh, as you rightly said, said, stop their ability to think to do anything, to even listen yeah. to the lectures in the class because they feel that everything is at their disposal in terms of information yeah. and knowledge. So yeah. uh, it, it is obviously time which is both interesting as well as scary because yeah. while yeah. technology has shown that what fantastic work it can do, at the same yeah. time, the, the way we are, you know, uh, leaning towards taking uh, yeah. so much help and so much letting everything. In fact, I don't even remember the last time I used uh, uh, my mind to do any calculation. I mean, for even yeah. the basic, it is like pick up the calculator from the mobile yeah. and, you know, use it. So hey, I go I'm, back historically, I always give this example to people that, I may remember phone numbers of people who are in class who were my friends in school, but I still don't know the number of my wife, right? So <laughs> it's, it's it's like that because ever since she happened to me or anyone happened to me in, my, in the last five, six years, we've stopped remembering numbers anyways. So I think our dependency on calculators or digital devices, we don't realize it at that point of time, but it is only after a decade that, okay, we have stopped making our brain function like that. And now we probably are not able to do it. So I think uh, it's important to keep training your mind. It's important to keep thinking and that will ultimately affect long-term physical health as well. So I think uh, people, people should not stop thinking. People should not stop communicating. 
I think that that's a core and that's that's a fear I actually see with Gen Z today and uh, I really want them to address it. Right. So if supposing there are aspirants out there who would like to make a career in social media marketing and digital business, uh, apart from, you know, whatever inputs you have said, any specific advice for them? Uh, it's not about just making reels. Uh, I think uh, I'll tell all the students out there uh, who've been spending a lot of time on digital channels, watching reels and making reels. Digital is not about just making reels. Uh, it's not just about making a lot of content. Uh, it is a lot about thinking and planning that how your audiences are behaving. I think uh, people only look at it from one side of the lens, but um, the moment they start looking, looking at it from the audience side of lens, that what your audience wants, um, digital has what digital has done over the last decade is that everything you do is measurable. So, and over a course of next 10 years, uh, as a performance marketing agency, I can tell you that everything that is measurable and can yield results is what the world wants, right? Uh, so they should also look at what numbers, how numbers are important, what matrix are important, uh, what are the key KPIs or what are the key uh, KRAs, no, KPR is the wrong term. What are the key a KPIs and indicators that will shape the future of digital? Uh, that will only help them understand that how the Indian audience or how the global audience would behave to a certain marketing campaign. So I would want them to study the consumer behavior. I would want them to study how, what, what your relevant audience of a product wants. I would want them to understand the matrix behind it. I would want them to understand the marketing funnels and then probably come to the channels. So what people do immediately is, okay, get to channels. What is digital about? It's about Facebook, Instagram. No, I think digital is about first planning and understanding about your audience. Once you understand your audience to which you are serving content, numbers, campaigns to, you'll be able to gauge that, okay, this is what my audience want. This is what my brand is. And then you design a strategy and work around it. So I would say to Gen Z's that, okay, Reels and everything you see on platforms like Instagram or Snapchat is not digital. There's much more to it beyond it. Uh, of course, search does exist. OTTs are doing so well today. Um, there's, of course, uh, some massive platforms like InShorts, Paytm, who are, who've been explicitly used by a lot of companies to exploit or to exploit the, the various advertisement placements to reach out to their audiences in a different, in a lot of different ways, in, in very innovative ways. So in the basics of marketing remains the same. It's just the channels which have changed. And and digital is not just meta or Google network. It's much more beyond it. It's our every communication which we make via of with our smartphone today. So it's important to understand the audiences. It's important to understand their psychology. It's important to understand the products or services you want to market. And then, if, then think, okay, what is digital and what channels can I work on? Rather than thinking, okay, I'll make an Instagram reel and probably this will take a hit off and yeah, we are a digital market here. No, I think it doesn't work that way anymore. So I think it's all about the content and the consumer then. Both the things. I think it's, it's I think it's always about the consumer. Uh, as long as you understand your consumer, you understand what they want, uh, what, what are they consuming, uh, what are their behavior aspects, what kind of devices do they use, how do they spend money, all of these data points become the platform of everything else you do. Because wherever the consumer goes, goes, the marketing channels will follow. Tomorrow, if it comes on your eyes through a Google lens, the phones will probably not make sense because <laughs> everything will be there. Right. So it's not about a channel. It's not about a platform. It's about, it, it will always be about the consumer. Great, great. That sounds very interesting. But at the same time, I think there's a huge responsibility on educators also, because this concept wherein you are focusing on the consumer, it may not be 
as greatly highlighted as the way you know you are talking about and uh, while we have since the last you know so many years even when when we were doing marketing it was always the customer is the king but i think now it is like you have to go into his mind and see that what he is thinking and what he might even you know anticipate his requirements at some point of time so and and doing that on a digital level so uh, the the, the role of psychology right? is also going to increase drastically if if we have to really think where uh, you know the consumer is thinking and what he is wanting it's 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 a funny fact i'll give you a stat fact that there are 1 billion active customers on meta network today and uh, they consume cumulatively 100 billion reels together every day which means every customer every consumer has exposure to at least 100 videos every day right which means that their attention span is so low because you don't have as much time that you can exactly. spend so much on watching reels so ultimately you have to make your mark in a very noisy space so unless you are a pro customer centric brand or a pro customer centric marketer you will not be able to make that mark so and and like i always say that we are in the age of abundance everything has so many options everything has so much information so much of diversity it's it's tough to make a choice so as long as you do not understand what your customer wants you will not be able to crack it right right i think that is a uh, great advice and i'm sure that uh, those of you who will have this video this conversation and they will take back this learning and uh, they will stop thinking from their own perspective what is comfortable to them that they go and offer that rather do a reverse psychology of thinking what the 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 consumer wants so wonderful yeah. and uh, thank you so much siddharth this this conversation will i'm sure be useful for a lot of these students who are aspiring to be in digital marketing who are already there starting out their career and when they see that you at your young age and in your short span of time has has done so incredibly well uh it it will be really inspirational and motivational for them so so thank you so much and thank you so uh, much. thank you thank so much. you, thank you for taking our time today i'm sure you mentioned but i love my time with you thank you so much thank you very much